Welcome to the Inner Circle. This is the review show where me and AJ talk about nonsense because movie theaters are dead and the industry is also dead. We watched three movies this week. All of them bad. Some of them worse than others. AJ, what was the first movie? Let's get that one out of the way immediately. The first movie was a travesty called Forest Warrior starring Chuck Norris. And Chuck it, Norris. it was like the only reason that Chuck Norris is in this movie is because his younger brother directed it. Yes. And we thought it was an action movie called Forest Warrior starring Chuck Norris beating up people in the woods with muskets and whatever. It's not. It's about a bunch of kids trying to save the woods like every other 90s made-for-TV movie. Yeah, it, it sort of devolves into a generic kids film that has a really, like, beat-you-over-the-head environmentalist message. And uh, it's essentially like Chuck Norris is a, a, a mountain spirit that can shapeshift into a hawk, a bear, or a wolf, and he's barely in it. Yeah, that's completely irrelevant. The same way the entire prologue, the whole first... 20 minutes of the movie is this like journey of him running through the woods fighting people because he's saving his dying wife or something. They just blow through it in narration and then we just go into the story about the kids and it immediately tanks from being at least a little fun to trash. I hated it 1 out of 10. Yeah, I'd give it a 1 out of 10 as well. It's not worth anybody's time if you ask me. Unless you really just want to look it up, it's probably on YouTube for free. Uh, I'm pretty sure it was. Like, I could really only, yeah, it's on YouTube for free. I could really only recommend this film to any Chuck Norris fan, like, diehard Chuck Norris fan. Other than that, don't bother. All right, movie number one, done. Trash, get it out of my face. AJ, movie number two. Movie number two. Uh, we like this one a lot better. It's called The Wraith, starring Charlie Sheen, when he was, you know, a young, like, teen actor before he was crazy. Probably still on cocaine, though. Oh, absolutely. Um, he, he looked, in some shots, a little a little bug-eyed, uh, to put it nicely. Yeah, but I mean, this was, this was a fun movie. It's sort of like everything that Ghost Rider wishes it was. This was a good Ghost Rider movie many, many years before a Ghost Rider movie was made. Yeah, so the plot is basically the same. You know, the Wraith is a vengeful spirit, uh, but instead of driving a flaming motorcycle, he drives like this super cyberpunk looking supernatural car. And he is in like this weird biker outfit. It's very metal. Very. Um, and we realized while watching this movie, maybe the most interesting part of it, for it being kind of, kind of generic for the kind of action save the girl lane it's in the villain of the movie is much more interesting than the main character this is true yeah like the, the main character charlie sheen is is the wraith but he doesn't really have any character traits that stand out other than the fact that he was murdered and became this supernatural like anti-hero yeah and and like that's that's cool and all but that's established early and about halfway through the movie you can kind of tell what's going on and it makes perfect sense and it's nice but the bad guy of this movie is is unless we are crazy a much more layered character because he has a like a very empty or like a very vague backstory but it's only interesting because he's such a psychopath who's leading this gang that like care about him even though he's using them and I just I that would that had my attention much more like like, than like anything else every other character besides Charlie Sheen is interesting yeah like all the gang members you just mentioned like I want to know how he was able to like ring those guys up yeah like their their whole gang um what's, what's the term mentality like, they all have a role to play, and they're all very unique from one another. Like, you have, you have the geek who soups up the cars, you have the, um, like, the one that's sort of autistic. <laughs> like, he doesn't, he doesn't talk right, he's just kind of there because they tolerate him. Yeah, and um, he, he hangs out with the, the tweaker. Right, and the, the tweaker guy is, like, huffing nitrous in every scene. I was very surprised by that, just seeing, like, straight up in the movie. And, then, like, the opening, like, I think it wasn't the opening scene of the movie, he straight up says, 
man, I'm tweaking, and then he hugs the nitrous, <laughs> just center of the frame, all on him. Can we can we talk about Randy Quaid as the as the sheriff? Oh my God, Randy Quaid plays the sheriff in this movie beautifully. He puts up with no crap from anyone, and he's just straight up going off on people constantly, and. He knows what's happening. He knows the crimes are being committed, and he knows, like, this weird ghostly figure is killing gang members. But he doesn't... I don't think the entire movie doesn't do anything to actually try and stop it. Yeah, well, I mean, Randy Quaid is, is just kind of, like, along for the ride, you know? He, like, yeah. he sort of plays the role of, like, the stereotypical no-nonsense black cop, but it's Randy Quaid. And he's more of a, he's more of a cowboy. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's about right. Um, and like, so like story-wise, it's all right. Char the characters have enough personality to keep you into it, and especially keeping you into movies the stunt work because that's that's like the whole appeal is it, of this movie is cars are racing, and cars are exploding and falling down canyons. Yeah, I know. Like all of the uh, the racing scenes are very well shot, very well paced. Um, it, ke it keeps you entertained and, and riveted for the most part, and it, it is very satisfying when you get to the end and you finally get like the the main villain, the complete psychopath, mm. and, and the wraith going one to one. It's a very very satisfying ending, I would say. And uh, yeah, the wraith. Not a terrible film. I would actually recommend it. Yes, I recommend it. It's a fun watch. Um, if you if you really want to get too deep into it, uh, like we did, there's a lot you could try and unpack on your own about the mentality of the main villain and his gang. Um, so I'd, I'd give it like, I'd, I'd say 6 out of 10, but in my heart it's a 10 out of 10. Yeah. Well, it's it's very much a product of its time. It's it's hardcore '80s, as '80s as you can get it, and because of that, I'm just automatically gonna love it. Yeah. Um, genuinely, I would give this movie probably a 7.5 out of 10. 7.5. Yep. All right. Yeah. <laughs> now, movie number three, maybe the greatest one we watched in this spree of of terrible films. We watched. Samurai Cop. Samurai Cop. Samurai Cop. It needs no introduction. Most. It's just that you get everything you need to know about it from the title alone. <laughs> exactly. He is a cop, but he is a samurai. Like, so, Samurai <laughs> Cop is sort of this notorious bad film. I would put it, like, notorious on the same level as The Room from Tommy Wiseau. Yeah, but I feel like it's even more entertaining. It's way more entertaining. Because it tries to be like this hardcore 80s action film, but it doesn't know what it's doing. It doesn't know what it's doing at all. The story, at the very first scene, just starts. And you don't know what's going on, you don't know who these people are. They're barely introduced, and then it just keeps going. And it keeps going, and you're wondering, like, is this is this even a movie? What are, is this like an assembly cut of footage? Because everything is just happening piece by piece. It's a, it's a movie only on technicality. Yes. Because all of these shots, all of these characters, are so randomly placed, and a lot of these shots don't really like mesh with each other, because because. Um, <laughs> I can't. I can't. Because they're all there so the samurai cop can sleep with them. Yeah, no, okay, so a lot of this movie, believe it or not, is actually softcore porn. Yes, I'm not kidding. Um, there are, uh, okay, so out of the, I would, I'm just gonna make a rough guess. I'd like, if this movie had like a 90 minute runtime, which I know it's more than that, at least it felt like it's it. It's like an hour and a half. Okay, yeah. so out of an hour and a half runtime, at least, I'd say 15 to 20 minutes is dedicated to shots of women's asses and samurai cop trying to... Be try like the, 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 the sole supplier of testosterone. Yes. Yeah. And it's very uncomfortable because you're like, okay, whatever. It's like, you know, a, a love scene. But then it's five minutes past and they're still playing like 
the cringy music, and he's still like trying to kiss the poor woman. And Ironically it's, enough, like all the love scenes are shot way better than any of the action scenes or dialogue scenes. And that's like, really the scariest part of the movie. Yeah, well, because like they'll they'll randomly cut to a really gratuitous sex scene. Yeah, and then within seconds you'll be in this really dark setting where like the bad guys are torturing people. Yeah, and then and then without any in between to show what like there's no how, establishing shots. There's not no establishing shots whatsoever. Oh no, that's not what I'm talking about. Without the in between to show anything, we go from we go from samurai cop in bed with a woman to the villains like torturing people and then samurai cop and his sidekick just bust in the door and start shooting them. Can we talk about how his sidekick is like 100% a stereotype? Because this is a buddy cop movie. Yeah. But it's it's like the poor man's version of Lethal Weapon. It. Oh my God, that's exactly what it is. Yeah, and and then like your your main character, his name is Samurai Cop, and they established that he trained with the masters. That's an actual quote from the movie. Yes. Yeah, so the masters in Japan. So he knows martial arts. He knows how to fight with a sword, but then like. When he goes to talk to the Japanese gangster who is the main villain of the movie, mm -hmm. he's like, what's your name, Fuj... Fujiyama? And I'm like, okay. And then somebody, like his partner asks him, what does katana mean? And he uh, goes, it means Japanese sword. <laughs> yeah, uh, so katana equals Japanese sword coming from the man trained by the masters. And the, he only uses the katana twice in the film. That's what I was about to bring up. So, there's only two times in the entire movie where the katana is used um, by the man called the Samurai Cop, the namesake of the of the movie. And it's the one time, first time he uses it. He throws it like it's an axe at, uh, at a man shooting at him from very close range. And it chops the man's arm completely off and you get the shot from like Star Wars where the monster's arm just falls on the ground. And I'm like, that. First off, it's not how that works. It looks really fake because it's a very like sort of Halloween store like fake arm prop. Yeah. And then, like interspliced with that shot of the arm falling to the ground, you get this like really obscene close up of Matt Hannon, the star of the movie, just like with a psychopathic facial expression, it's just like, ha! Ah! And you just really don't know what to think because this movie is random. Like, it is the yeah, definition of random. But, but let's, let's get back on the point here. It's called Samurai Cop. He throws the sword once, and then at the end of the movie, he has a terrible sword fight. The worst the, choreography you've ever seen. The entire rest of the movie, all 130, 40 minutes apart from that, is, is just him shooting people. Samurai Cop. It should be called... Cop, because he doesn't do anything samurai-ish. It, it should be cop with a mullet. Yes. Which, by the way, the opening shot that establishes samurai cop as, like, the character, he's wearing this terrible, terrible wig, but it doesn't show up for the rest of the movie because he actually has his natural mullet. Because apparently, when they had to go do reshoots, they had to reshoot the entire first scene, and he had already gotten a haircut. So they just got, like, this dime store wig to throw on him, and then a hat, just to cover up like the fakeness, but it doesn't help at all. It just makes it look worse. And that's like that's a good representation of the whole movie because we've mentioned like in this rambling, it's it's shot poorly. There's no establishing shots. It's all no, slapped together. No transitions. It's like see, it's medium shots of things happening that were written in the script back to back to back to back. Movie ends, and it's and the audio is terrible. It's, the lighting is terrible. A scene will go from being lit kind of well to being completely yellow, like they just completely, completely, washed completely out. messed up their white balance out. And then it's just, I don't, I don't know how, it, how that movie happened. I know it's supposed to be so bad it's good, but I kind of just hated it. I mean, I love it because, you know, I, I love it the same way that I love The Room. It's just a, a mess of a film, and it's only a film on technicality. I guess, I guess. <laughs> but if we're gonna if we're gonna rate this like genuinely, I would give it probably a two. I get a two? 
Well, it, it, it's, it gets a two because, well, it, without the entertainment value, it would be a one. I think easily. You, you know what? If Forest Warrior was a one, Samurai Cop is definitely a two. It's better than Forest Warrior. Which was somehow, <laughs> somehow better than a Chuck Norris movie. <laughs> <sighs> it was a trip. Uh, so if I'm going to put a watch list, I'll say Watch the Wraith, maybe Samurai Cop after, you know, after a fun evening, and uh, throw, away, throw away Forest Warrior. It's trash. Never look at it. Yeah, I'd agree with that. All yeah. right. Thank mm -hmm. you.